Welcome to our lesson about creating crossfades. A crossfade is when you want to overlap two audio events, either to create a smooth transition or to apply some special effect. And this is a pretty useful tool for merging two takes of an instrument or a voice. Essentially, what you do to create a crossfade is select the two audio events that you want to crossfade, and these need to be overlapping or consecutive, that is, touching end to start. Let's select these two events here. Now let's go to the audio option on the main menu and select crossfade. Oh, it's grayed out. We can't select it. Okay, let's try the shortcut key for crossfade. That's an X on the keyboard. And we get an error message. We've selected events that cannot be crossfaded because there is no overlapping audio material. Let's click OK to close the warning window. Now let's have a listen to our work to figure out where exactly we're going to place our crossfade. Let me just mute the track that I won't be crossfading. I'm going to put these two events together. Let's zoom in tight. Let's snap them together. I've got events snap toggled on. So this will snap my events end to start. Now that the two events are positioned consecutively, let's zoom out a little bit and have a listen for continuity. Okay, I do need to move this over just a little bit. Let's listen for continuity again. And that's my downbeat. Let's just hone in a bit. Stop playback. Okay, that does sound good. These two events do overlap a little bit. Let's select both events. We'll just shift select to get them both. Audio, and now the crossfade option is available. Again, the shortcut key is an X on your keyboard, which is super easy. There's our crossfade. Let's zoom in to take a better look at it. The area that's crossfaded is marked with an X, and the overlapping area is gray. Let's zoom back out. Zoom locators. Actually, let's zoom full. Now, even if your events don't overlap, you're still able to crossfade as long as the events are lined up end to start with no gap. We'll snap these two events together without any gaps because I've got snap mode events type toggled on. They are consecutive and touching. We'll select both events. Crossfade. Audio. Select the crossfade option. And there's our crossfade. Let's undo that crossfade. We can also select a range for the crossfade using the range selection tool. Just press X. That's how we can determine a custom length for the crossfade within the event display window. We can edit a crossfade by selecting one or both of the crossfaded events and then going to audio, crossfade. This opens the crossfade dialog window. Let's close that. We're also able to just double click in the crossfaded area and this will open the same window. On the left side, we see the unique sections for the fade in and out curve settings. These settings work just how they do in the regular fade parameters dialog window. And on the right hand side of the window, we have settings that are common to both fades in the crossfade. Here are the crossfade display lines. Equal gain. This adjusts the fade curve so that the sum of all the amplitudes of the waveforms of your crossfading will be the same. And this is good for short crossfades. Equal power. This adjusts the fade curve so that the power of the crossfade will be constant along the crossfade region. You can audition the components of the crossfade by clicking Play Fade Out or Play Fade In. The Play Crossfade will audition the crossfade itself. And this lets you hear just the region you're working on that's within the crossfade parameters. 
You can also give yourself some pre- and post-roll if you want to audition the crossfade in context. Enter the length of the pre- and post-roll in seconds and milliseconds. Up here we can determine the length of the crossfade for default settings. Enter a value here in seconds and milliseconds. This will only work if your original audio file gives you enough room to work with, so keep that in mind. If you've got a crossfade set up that you really like, you can click here to save it as a preset. Type in your name. Click OK. Now this appears as a preset selection. You can remove it the same way, just select it from the menu, and then click the little trash can icon for delete. Clicking as default stores your current parameter adjustments as the default crossfade. That'll be what gets used when you create a new crossfade. Underneath, we've got recall default, and that restores the settings that you've got stored as default, just like restore in the fade parameters dialog window. Let's close the crossfade parameters dialog window, and let's restore our project window, and we'll just maximize. Crossfading is something you'll be using frequently, most often to create seamless transitions while you're creating a composite from multiple takes of a voice or instrument. This concludes our lesson about creating a crossfade.